Hey everyone, I'll just give a few more, maybe a minute or so and just uh, see if there's any more people joining in, but uh, good to see you here. Fantastic. Right, I'll get started. So uh, welcome uh, to this AMA with the delivery team. Um, for those of you who don't know us, um, I'm Amy, I'm the engineering manager for the team. And we've also got Alessio and Myra on the call um, who are in the team as well. And uh, delivery are responsible for releasing all features and bug fixes out to GitLab.com and also to our self-managed users. So this means day to day we're coordinating on releases um, but then we're also building up the actual scalable release tools that we use as well. And then alongside this, we have a big project where we are migrating GitLab.com over to Kubernetes. So uh, this will be um, helpful in, uh, in improving site reliability, but it also gives us kind of additional options on deployments as well. So at the top of the agenda item, uh, just highlighted here, we've got an issue um, which you can kind of review, which is our 2020 in numbers. So it looks back over all the things that changed in the last 12 months, um, quite a lot actually. <laughs> um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the sort of things we're working on, a bit of a direction for us next year as well. Well, this year, sorry, as well. So as we go through, if people could help out uh, writing notes, that would be very helpful. Does anybody have a question they'd like to start us off with? Or is there something um, like maybe what's the, um, Perhaps what's the like least clear thing about this team that would be uh, helpful? We can maybe try and uh, clear up a little bit. So how about I tell you a little bit about so in this uh, 2020 numbers. Um, so last year, we made some big changes to uh, the way we were doing daily deployments. And you can really see that reflected in the MTTP. So early in the year, we were um, around 100 hours uh, for MTTP. So that means that code that is effectively ready to be used by users um, is taking 100 hours to actually reach those users. And uh, through the work the team um, did over the last year, we've got that right down. We now have a target of 12 hours. Um, so that's quite a big, big difference. And that means like I say, not only that features are reaching users much earlier, but also it means that if we have bug fixes and things like that, they can also go out much more quickly. Um, so that was quite a big defining change. And that was one that also then led us to our next big significant project, which um, was around removing the blocking nature of security releases. So security releases are super important and have a very special uh, process to, to make sure we don't release anything before we should. Um, but by their nature, it meant that they also impacted on our daily GitLab.com deployments um, much more than we wanted them to. So we, had a big project uh, running for quite a lot of months, maybe the whole of last year, actually, um, but quite a lot of last year to remove those. And that was the other big step change for us on MTTP. 
So those were two quite uh, exciting changes. And as we go through this year, the um, big exciting changes will be around um, progress through the Kubernetes migration. So we're seeing the further through the migration we go, the more, um, no, sorry, the faster that the deployments to GitLab.com are running. It's just, it's faster to deploy to Kubernetes. So we'll see continued improvements there. Um, and then also the next big goal for us on our MTTP uh, journey is enabling rollbacks. So that will be a big uh, goal that we'll be working towards as well throughout this year. Is there anything else that I can helpfully uh, explain or answer or give any more sort of color around that would be interesting for people? So I do have a question just to keep the conversation going. Uh, what do you think uh, the delivery team could do this year that could completely exceed your expectations? That's a great question. Who wants to go first? Um, so to answer my own question, I think it could be uh, deploying directly from master. So as soon as I merge a merge request, it would be deployed to master. So one hour MTTP, <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> um, having security releases on demand, uh, not no longer need to wait at the end of the month to actually schedule a security release. Mm, could be, I like to dream. Yeah, both great suggestions. Um, yeah, I think mine is um, sort of a linked into those as well. Like, um, I think it's going to be the auto rollbacks because I think once we have that uh, safety net, then it opens up quite a lot of opportunities for increasing the deployment window. Um, I, am, I kind of imagine in my mind as a, a, a time where... Um, I can come online and actually the release tools tell me like there was a deploy and the new stuff happened. It went out, there was a problem detected uh, before any users saw it and it rolled back to the safe thing. So you kind of come online and immediately have the, here's the task I need to pick up because um, I mean, it just means that not only will deployments be able to go through more frequently, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's much closer to the kind of fully automated approach. So I think for me, that would be the, the really exciting one. What about anyone else? Like, is anyone, are there any um, like changes that would be helpful for uh, engineers or um, like design or anyone else who's on the call? Like what's the, what are the kind of um, sort of dream items for delivery? Cool. Okay, that's great. I'll, uh, I think, uh, I suppose, we also, uh, interestingly, are going to um, expect, I think, that MTTP stays around 12 hours for some time. Um, we have it in our sort of on our handbook page, that the next time we focus on um, changing the uh, target time will be once we have three months continuous um, achievement of the 12 hour goal whilst um, also having rollbacks in place. Um, is, there, is that a general view like that 12 hours is a reasonable, like a reasonably suitable time for a new, say, new feature or a new bug fix or you know, a new design to actually reach users? Great. Um, cool, Darwin, nice. Thank you for your question, your comment, go for it.
I'm sorry, did you want me to verbalize it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just uh, <clears throat> looking at, to see if there'd be a way to get Amazon Linux to support on um, our main install page. And then possibly we could do the um, Amazon AMI on Amazon Linux too. Um, it's technically CentOS binary compatible, CentOS 7. So, um, and I, I think we have that on the page. So I'm not sure if we actually um, prepare that or not. Um, or do we, do, we, do we test on the CentOS 7? I guess that's, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think distribution do. Uh, we do release it, um, I believe. Um, but uh, distribution actually provide us with these and uh, we deploy to them. So we may have to defer to them, but uh, we can certainly follow up for you on that one um, and find out what if there are plans uh, to do that as well. Cool. Yeah, we're getting more and more demand um, from the Amazon community and Amazon continues to improve uh, a lot of optimizations in, in their version of uh, CentOS 7. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, yeah, I'll uh, I'll ask uh, over in distribution and see if we can get you an answer for that. Cool. Um, excellent. Are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I actually have a question. Uh, sorry about the background noise. Uh, it's nice time here. Um, so with frequent deployments to production, how is delivery ensuring that production stays stable? Because the more frequent we deploy, the more we'll probably be maybe requiring rollbacks or, or we're, we're seeing issues that we would see less frequently if we're deploying less, less frequently. Yeah, so someone, do you want, you to, want me to take this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go for it. So great question. Thanks for asking. So there is, um, first of all, there's also the, cons we also have to consider that when we release um, with more frequency, like, like we're doing now, we release less changes. So it's easier to test them to detect, um, identify a problem and eventually roll back or roll forward, just uh, removing that. So what is actually, what we are actually doing to prevent this is, is this. So we added new metrics. So we have this, we call them deployment metrics, which are based on error rates and um, the, our SLO, so the applex in our application. So instead of using the same um, accuracy that we are using for paging um, on calls, we, we are, our metrics are more uh, sensible, uh, sensitive. So what happens is that we deploy to, to staging first, then we run a QA on it. And when QA completes, we start rolling out to Canary. On Canary, we run QA again, and we, we keep checking those numbers. So after that point in time, we have a baking time of one hour where we keep monitoring those numbers. And if everything is fine and there are no active incidents, then a release manager promotes the build to production. And yeah, I can tell you that it's actually working well and having a smaller change set gives us more confidence in promoting things. And we, we ended up having less incident because there's also a um, kind of psychological side effect here is that now that engineers know that if they merge something now, it could be online in production in a matter of hours, because we are speaking of hours, half a day, worst case, half a day, because it's, no, not worst case, it's average half a day. You, are, you tend to do more iterative work because you know that if something doesn't get shipped today, it gets shipped tomorrow. And so you're taking less chances and less risks. And the end result is that, yeah, deployments are more stable and we don't have big problems within production. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you for that. Great answer, especially the less changes part. I didn't think about that. Welcome. Cool. Are there any other questions? I have one more question. Um, yeah. Uh, does the delivery team um, ensure that um, production is um, 
identical to canary and uh, staging and development and the dev environment because if, if these environments are not identical then the QA would pass in, in one of the environments but then wouldn't pass on the other one so who, who is who is doing that is it delivery or um, what's the deal with the difference between the different environments yeah that's a fantastic question so um, infrastructure as a whole owns this really um, as we're all kind of responsible on the whole I mean they're never um, fully identical I suppose one of the biggest changes is as we um, as we deploy new services or you know continue through the uh, Kubernetes migration they begin on the staging environments and we sort of gradually roll them out through the canary environment through to production so at those points then the environments are quite different um, so I suppose it's uh, us knowing what the differences are and kind of making changes to the environments carefully. But um, it's also, I suppose, a key part of when we have, when we do have incidents or, or near misses where we actually kind of consider, was there something here? So I think um, probably the biggest change is not just infrastructure related, but we've, over the last few months, there've been quite a lot of improvements to the data that exists in the databases on say staging, um, to enable us database um, uh, migrations to be tested more effectively and things like that will often be quite like corrective actions that come out of incidents so that we can actually bring these things closer together. Oh, thank you. Oh, cool, thank you for asking. Um, Ian, do you want to verbalize? Sure, you just mentioned in the goals for 2021, option three was to change the new direction towards shipping GitHub features instead of the, the manual tooling. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So I just wanted to provide some more details on what the, the, the goal is with that one. Yes, thank you for asking. Um, so yes, um, through necessity um, at the moment, um, we run most of our deployments and uh, release tooling is custom built and sits outside of the actual GitLab product. So now we have a lot more um, features available to us in uh, the product that we can be starting to move over to. And also we've simplified a lot of the uh, deployment and release process. So actually it's a little bit more standardized than it used to be. So the goal is, um, the end goal is to have our deployments entirely running from within the GitLab product. There are a few things that are, are very unique to GitLab. So we'll like be moving towards those incrementally, particularly the way we handle security releases. But for this year, what we're starting to do, what we started last year, we'll be continuing through this year, is identifying features that exist already that we can be moving over to. So one example is um, last year, we did a big piece of work to uh, rewrite our release code to use the API, um, which got us a bit closer. And we're also currently doing work to change the way we generate change logs so that it sits more closely within the product as well. So we're we'll looking through this year to actually identify additional uh, features uh, that either exist or you know, we could be close to getting. So we're working very closely with releases at the moment on how could we move over to uh, the deploy freeze feature or how could we... Um, adopt the rollback feature that already exists and how we can actually you know, take a bigger part in those things as well. Cool. Thank you, that sounds pretty interesting. Cool, thanks for asking. Are there any other questions? No, if not, well, thank you so much for everyone for coming along and uh, for asking questions. And um, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you all in a month's time. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.